I think we've had a few people joining already, which is great. Fab. And then I'll get the live streams up for Facebook now. So if you guys are ready in five, four, three, two, one. Great, I think we're live on Facebook. Hi everyone, it's Eleanor here from Fashion Beauty. Today we are joined by salon business consultant Susan Routledge and Kat Phillips, a Chicago-based esthetician and owner of Graffin Skin and Beauty. Today we're going to be discussing the psychological impact of reopening your business, as well as the impact on your staff and your clients. Um, we'll have some time at the end of this webinar to go for any questions you might have at all at the end. So if you've got any burning questions for Susan and Kat, please do send them through. Kat and Susan, thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you both. Great to be here. Great. Such an honour. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to have you. So a lot of people will be feeling really nervous or apprehensive about reopening their salons. And Susan, you were mentioning um, in our conversation that in your beauty directors club with um, Kat and your mentoring group, um, that the topic of the psychological impact came up in one of your sessions and it was actually a really big topic, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, the thing is that, you know, obviously hair opening is slightly different. And I think people have adapted to getting the hair done very quickly. But, um, you know, the, the, the whole thing of people being touched and, and, and really, close contact um obviously we haven't had that yet but cat had been already open for three and a half weeks and and cat and i had spoken about the impact that it had for her clients and, and actually on her as well and that's why so i got cat to come into our mentor group and it was absolutely fascinating to find out sort of how everyone was feeling, but as well, the actual impact of, of opening, because, you know, I think we all just think, right, we'll open our doors, clients will come flooding in and that's going to be fine. But I think as well, we've got the, the impact on our team. You know, I think if we get this announcement at five o'clock today, I, I know already some of the messages I've had while I've been judging, I've in like in the breaks, I've been checking messages, and there, there are quite a few salon owners feeling apprehensive already. So you know that is going to be the same for team members. So I think this is just perfect timing. If we are going to get the the five o'clock message today, fingers crossed. Hopefully, so yes. Yeah, um, fingers crossed for that announcement. And Kat, you're based in Chicago. Can you tell us um, about your experience with reopening and how long your business had to remain closed and what it was like reopening in the US? So I was I closed on March the 16th and then I reopened on June the 3rd. Um, at first, when we first opened, we could only do a certain amount of um, services. So anything that could be done with a mask on, we could do. So we were doing eyebrows, modified eye treatments, um, leg waxing, things like that. So we opened that way and um, we did that for about two weeks and then um, the increased amount of PPE that became available and then we started being able to do facials again. And so now facials are being done um, and all treatments, but um, in a kind of a slightly modified way with extra PPE. So we'll, we will wear a mask and um, and also a shield plus gloves um, to be able to do all of our treatments. Amazing. And as a business owner, what is the psychological impact of reopening your business been like? Um, you know, it's been, it's been, it's not been what I had expected. Um, when we originally planned on opening, it felt like it was going to be a party that you were like having, being able to do your grand opening opening all over again with everything that you learned from the first time that you opened and people were going to be super excited and super happy and to a certain extent people were excited but there's an overwhelming sense of fear from the public and when they come in a lot of people didn't realize that when they are standing for the first time in front of someone that they have a a relationship kind of because we have kind of almost intimate relationships with our clients because of how much touch high touch we are the um 
a lot of them would, um, true fear would, would come over them. You'd see shaking. Some people would be crying. Some people would be relieved. We just saw a huge, um, just a huge change in, in everyone from so many different ways. People who are very strong all of a sudden were coming across very weak. And, and it, not only were we seeing that in people that we love, but we're also in people that we love and clients that we've been taking care of for years. We we're also seeing it in staff and even in ourselves that I think maybe we didn't anticipate in all of the busy work of getting everything back open. Yeah, it must have been really, um, yeah, a lot to kind of take on board with reopening. And can you share with us how this has impacted your team as well? So my team have been handling it really, really well. We have the, um, I have them working on an extremely uh, small basis, only one, one day a week and a couple hours a day, just to cut, and with large spaces between people because I came back, originally I came back for the first two weeks originally by myself and I stacked my clients the way I normally do and, and didn't give myself that, that space, that breath in between. Um, I've been able to anticipate that need a little bit better. So, so far, so far she's doing wonderfully, but it, it's just been, you know, it's again, it's, it's definitely not working the way that, that we were working before. Yeah, definitely. It's adjusting to this whole new world that we're living in. And what's the impact been on your clients as well? How have they kind of responded to it all? So um, I would say by and large, um, I still have, um, I would say probably 95% of my clients are, are beating down the doors and still wanting to come in. But about about 5%, they will think that they want to come in. And then the morning of, they call almost in a, in a panic deciding that they're just not, they're just not emotionally ready to come back in. Um, a lot of people have been talking about, uh, you know, letting everybody know what you're doing for cleaning and things like that. I haven't only had one person out of, I think I've seen 400 now, um, that uh, really, really has been concerned about what we're doing for cleaning. That's not been a huge concern for clients, but um yeah, it's uh, it's very interesting because sometimes you'll get in the middle of a treatment and and people will just start crying because they it's 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 been so long since they've had that sort of human connection with someone other than their nuclear family that it's almost as though they've forgotten how to receive love and care. That's I think really also, interesting. I think also as well, it a lot of people won't have had you've got a different relationship with your therapist as well you be a therapist or you, because you you tend to trust and offload to them as well and, and I think a lot of people won't have had that opportunity up until you know to have, have one to one time with someone away from the family and, and looking after everybody and keeping sure that everything was going well um, in lockdown and now all of a sudden they're, they're out. But it's it's different to go to the supermarket or, or going to a shop. You've got that one-to-one -one contact and, and closeness. And I think that's when, when people, again, I think that's even, it is totally different to go and having your hair done. You're in a hair salon, you've got four or five different conversations going on. When you just one-to-one -one with someone, I think it is that totally different kind of um relationship isn't it and, and I think that's where emotions probably will start as well you end up having a lot more heavy conversations like the really I mean as an esthetician you hear a lot of very very heavy conversations but a lot of times like the ones that really seem tragic maybe once a month once a quarter you don't hear them very often but I will say in the last four weeks I've probably heard maybe three truly tragic heart-wrenching stories a day and the impact of that is is huge because most of us are you know we, we we like people we don't get into this because we don't love people and so you take that burden home with you and you find that 
at the end of the week, you're so exhausted because you've just, you're holding the weight and you're holding space for all of those people that have come into you that are, um, are not in a great way right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And yeah, it's so true about having that close bond and relationship. And it's good to have that kind of, you know, social interaction again with your clients and vice versa. Um, Susan, in your mentor sessions with um, business owners, what are some of the things that people are feeling really apprehensive about in the UK? Uh, you know, what? I think it's gone in phases. It seems as if you get through one phase and then to the next, you know, the, the first phase was like the, oh my word, what nurse happening kind of thing. And then you got over that and then it was like, right, everybody needs to get PPE. And it was all that kind of phase. And, you know, and then it, we went into this lull of like, what nurse do we do kind of thing now? And, and what I found as well, talking to, to salon owners, with teams what the found is like to start with it was like all oh, you know all the, the catch-ups and meetings were all really like you know upbeat and you know this is we'll be back soon and everything and then it went into the there was a lot of salon owners saying that that team had started to disengage a little bit and they were struggling on how to like motivate them and get them back because obviously with everyone being on furlough having catch-ups and meetings it was all um voluntary whether they they turned up um and you know i spoke to quite a few salon owners who were getting a little bit worried that certain team members weren't t turning up to to the weekly chats or whatever they were having um but you know you, you just don't know as well what's going on in 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 the surroundings of you know someone at home catching up on on a, a zoom is still not the same as like a team all being together and that bond that they've got um so yeah i think that's been one issue i think that but i think what if we get a date that'll start and change again because now it's like we've got something to look forward to and it's you know sort of a you know a, a positive but We've been in no man's land for, for quite a while. And as well, because the weather was so good, I think there was a lot of um, salon owners thinking, you know, they were doing all the webinars and seminars and, and learning and doing everything that they could. And then they've got that team who were like out sunning themselves <laughs> you know, in the garden and, and basically felt like it, they were on holiday um you know and I was like saying you know if you were a therapist you'd be doing exactly the same the fact that we're like head down trying to get as much sorted it, it is different so I think there's just been so many different emotions because nobody's ever gone through this before and you know everyone's in it together but you know that's why it's been so great to have Kat because you know we haven't experienced going back yet um you know and, and and hearing it from another side kind of thing because you know you do think oh we're going to go back clients are going to beat the door down and and you know and it's going to be fantastic i mean today and i'm sure everyone's the same you, you get constant phone calls from from clients asking when you're going back because they're on social media and seeing all sorts of different things and um and, and they don't know what's right and what's not and and i think most thought when hair went back we'd be going back um so yeah so it's it's you know it's just a roller coaster really i think everyone's been on a, on a roller coaster <laughs> to be honest but we're near in the end fingers crossed but then Kat was saying that they're possibly going to have to lock down again so yeah Kat could you tell us a little bit more about that yeah it's all up in the air right now um uh, California locked back down again although I not a lot of their aesthetic services were already being offered um but we're just seeing some surges going and some of the states are starting to close down again and we do tend to be one of those states that um that chooses to close and protect its citizens rather than um, than uh, go the commerce route, and so we'll just we'll see what happens. It's just a it's a day by day. It's a day by day. We're watching the numbers are glued to it. It's like a sporting event. Absolutely. And what do you think are some of the key ways that we can support our team members as we do reopen? Are there any tips or advice that you would give other salon owners? 
to me or to Kat? I had to both of you. Kat, would you like to go first? I can. I would say, you know, offer as much um, platform to talk. I think that if I, if I were, I mean, we're, we're a team of two. I think that if I had a larger, um, I think if I had a larger team, I probably would uh, seek out a, a therapist to find a therapist. If one of my clients needed to, or one of my, uh, one of my staff members needed someone to talk to and it was something that I couldn't handle. I think that really devilifying um, mental health care at this point, I think is really important and um, offering assistance for people if they need that. Um, I would also really recommend giving a safe space if someone needs to come to you and speak to you, cry to you. Um, I think that that's, I think that's really important. Um, it, and just um, letting people know that that this is this is all all these feelings are normal. We're all going through this for a first time together. We've all um, as as a global society, we've all gone through multiple tragedies in the last few months, and we've all gone through it together. But we've all done it separately in our own houses, and so we may not really know what's happened in someone else's house and that that's your staff that's your clients that's that's the other the other businesses in your building and um just having a little bit of empathy for it and and deep breaths and <laughs> spend as much time as you can centering yourself between clients I would be my best recommendation i think it's finding out exactly how everyone's feeling i think you know, we've been doing the, the team meetings and things. I think it's really getting down to speaking to each employee individually and finding out exactly how they're feeling and, and not to poo-poo anything, you know, um, because, you know, I think there is a lot of, when, you know, someone who is, has been anxious in the past, possibly going to be, or is going to be more anxious uh, and that's going to be just a natural reaction to them. Um, but, you know, someone who's been absolutely fine in the past, you know, you don't know whether they've got like underlying concerns about coming back, you know, it's, uh, so I think it's, it, it's finding out exactly how someone's feeling and as well, you know, um, dispelling any fears by, walking them through you know i think a great thing to do is to get the team together um beforehand walk through all of the procedures how everything's going to change so that they know in advance whether or not you know so that they, they they're used to whether practicing treatments and things you know because how they've done things in the past everything's changed for them coming back and you know in a in a salon it, there's so many different treatments as well but going back to sort of like how they are feeling you know we aren't really qualified to uh, take on board their mental health issues you know so i think it's always a good idea to because sometimes someone needs to speak to someone independent so it could be you know there's like fantastic organizations like mind who will just it might just be a case of like someone just having a conversation independently you know uh, we all think we're great bosses but not everybody wants to talk to to you on a deeper level so I think you've just got to respect that sometimes you might not even get the, the true story kind of thing either it might be something that it's just some people are just going to try and put a brave face on so I think the first few weeks it's just going to be it's going to be a listening and, and and watching game kind of thing to make sure everyone is is settling back in and again you know teams are going to quite often be split i know our team we're splitting it and um, so you know they're not going to be working seeing each other as much as for the first few weeks as well um, and we you know we don't know how long this is going to go on we don't know how clients are going to react they're going to be taken on a lot from their clients so I say yeah I think it's just a, the first few weeks are going to be it's going to be an exciting time and you know I think you've got to stay upbeat about it but I think as well there's got you just got to be very very aware of like more so than ever what's going on 
in the background kind of thing and, and how and just be very observant of how how all the team are acting and, and feeling that's great advice i think yeah talking is so important and what can we do what can business owners do to protect themselves mentally as we begin to reopen our businesses what would you advise as the best way to kind of do that Kat would you like to go first um I would say that if you have a network of other business owners in your field that you can reach out to I have been incredibly blessed that I have I have business owners around around the United States, and I have I've I have Susan and my my friends that I've met through Susan in the UK, and you know having that support from someone who's 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 been in my shoes, and you know and knows the day in and day out of being the owner and you know and being a beauty therapist, it is um, it's really 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 helpful. Um, to have that support at this time. And I'd say if you can reach out, they need you as much as you need them right now. Mm. Yeah, I think exactly the same. I mean, we are really lucky because I've got Beauty Directors Club and you know, it's a great community, like a safe community. But there's, you know, there's other um, groups out there as well and organizations. Um, because sometimes your family don't understand you know, they then they just like think, oh, salon's closed, going to reopen again, get on with it, and it's it, you know they don't see the um, the the anguish that goes on. Obviously, we want to make sure that we've got everything right. We've also got the responsibility of making sure that we've got sort of you know all the correct PPE. We've got everything in place so that we're keeping our team and our clients safe. So it's it's a it's the responsibility anyway having a, a salon but now you've just got that extra on your shoulders to make sure that not only are they take all the treatments going to be safe but that the environment's totally safe as well so it's 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 just such a um and if you if you can have some so close confidants who are in the same industry i just think that is just it it just means that you you know you 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 you've got people who are going through exactly the same thing um and and yeah it's a great way to keep each other upbeat and positive and and every like i keep saying everyone's going through this together and it, it's been to the point where it's not even just in the uk it's like in the whole world everyone's going through this together um and i think that's just been you know it, it has i think it's brought our industry together i think it's really really like knitted together even in local communities um of salons you know the competition sort of like gone out the window everyone's just like working together and i, I just think that has been fantastic to see it's, it's lovely absolutely we're um we'll have time for some questions at the end so if anyone's got any questions for susan and Kat, please do send them in and we'll go through them in about 10 minutes or so um, but another few questions from me. Um, how, what are some of the ways that we can reassure clients if they're feeling a little bit apprehensive about coming in? What are some of the ways that we can help dispel any worries or concerns about coming back in? Do you want me to go first, Kat, or do you want to go first? Go for it. Go for it. You got this. <laughs> um, for in the UK, I'm not quite sure. I'm sure you've done something similar. I think it's a case of making sure that clients be they come in know exactly what it's going to be like you know doing a video of um how someone's been going to be greeted through the salon you know that they're going to have to sanitize the hands and the, the, there's not going to be any magazines that you know they're not going to have like that sit, sit and have that cup of coffee all of those things all the anything that you've changed I think that would be great to do as like a walkthrough video to, to so that clients can actually visually see beforehand before they come that they know and uh, that they know that they're going to get a, a pre-check screening a day before to fill in and um, you know you know that if you're going to take temperatures that that's going to happen when you come in all of the things so that they are as prepared as possible beforehand I think that is to, to expect them just to, to come in, I think it would be a little bit scary for them at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's uh, to me, that's, that's 
a great way to do it. What about you, Kat? I honestly, I think a video would be would have been brilliant had I thought about it. The um, there is some apprehension when people come in because it, things are just so different. Um, I have found that personally greeting them at the door and then walking them through each step, going for the, you know, walking them through the door, showing to the hand sanitizer, talking to them about what you're doing and what the next step is so that they don't, uh, they don't end up standing there and, you know, going around in a circle. Where can I put things? I don't know what to do with my stuff. And that's really, that's the one that, 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 I've seen a lot where people don't know where to set their purse because they know that you're cleaning so much that they are worried about making you clean more, which is really lovely that they're, that a client's first concern is not making it more burdensome on you. So I would definitely say that, you know, anything that you can do to let them know calls beforehand, emails, um, texts, depending on how people like to speak, are also really, really helpful to just ease their mind that you are paying attention to them before they come in. Mm. I don't even know whether, you know, I think I've just thought about this. <laughs> It'd be quite nice just to give someone a ring afterwards as well and, and yeah, check how yeah. they are and, and uh, you know, and, and how they found it and if there was anything that you could have done better or yeah, I think that might be quite nice as well. I think the more contact you've got, the, the, the you know, the, I think that's just key at the moment, the contact thing. And as well, say making someone, so, you know, it, things like if where someone would normally just come with a coat and a bag and things, you know, if, if that's not necessary, if someone knows that that's best just to leave the, like a, a coat in the car, um, you know, whether they're going to be allowed just to come straight in or whether they've got to wait at the door, all those kind of things. So I think a great thing to do would be to do a couple of walkthroughs yourself beforehand and then to, to video it so that, and, and document it so that you, you, someone knows every step of the way personally. I think that's great, Susan, mostly because we, the biggest thing that we're trying to do is that we have to be able to replace the hug. Our, our business is almost in some ways based on hugs. They hug at the beginning, hug at the end. But, you know, in social distancing, that's gone for us. So we have to find another way that we can safely let our clients know that we are, are hugging them um, because they need that reassurance. They need, they need that. And I think the after phone call is brilliant. Start doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> We've um, had a few questions in. Um, so I'm going to go through those now. And if you have got any questions, please do send them in. So we've got about 10 minutes or so for any burning questions. Um, Lisa has asked, um, is it okay to do a facial when the client can't wear a mask? Also wearing gloves for a facial. Kat, what have you been doing in your business? So in my business, I've always worn gloves for facials uh, just because my hands are very sensitive. Um, so that wasn't a big change for me. But um, when I'm doing my uh, when I'm doing my facials, I'm wearing a mask and then I'm also wearing a shield over top of it. Um, and then anytime I'm really close to the face, I also put my loop, my, uh, my magnifying lamp in between myself and the client to give a little bit more of a barrier. Um, and then I'm also running a UVC light between clients to be able to scrub the air uh, because they are unmasked for it. There are um, a few people that I've recently seen, they're, um, they're like little cups, they're um, fabric masks that they're setting on their client when the masks are sitting or things like that and they're not actively working on the face. So I've seen that as well, although I don't know very many people that are doing that here in the US. And Sandra Lee has asked, um, do you wear gloves for body massage, manicures, pedicures? Do you do any of those treatments in your, in your business? I don't do manicures and pedicures, um, and I also don't do body massage, but I do hand and arm, and and I wear I wear gloves for the in, for the entire the entire process, and and like I said, that for me has not been a huge change. I will say that for people who haven't done that before, um, buy your gloves one size too small. So if you think you're a, a medium sized glove, buy a small. It'll um, it'll fit smoother here so you won't feel any of the wrinkling 
And once you actually have them on, they're much less likely to break. I would say with the manicures and pedicures as well, um, check your safety data sheets because a lot of um, nail products now, I say gloves are recommended. So um, yeah, I would say that um, it's probably will become mandatory anyway. Um, and then for, I did an interview um, a few days ago with um, Tamar Shuri, who is a fantastic top cosmetic surgeon. And um, and he was saying, we, we were asking about all of like different PPE, because to me, the, the, the guidelines, we've got the same as um, hair salons aren't really sufficient we more like we need more of like the medical kind of guidelines um so i got uh, tim on he was absolutely brilliant and he was saying with things like massage and that he can't see any problem at all um you know and but uh, that was he gave some fantastic advice so i don't know whether i could put that link in or something um on because that was that was a a really good interview on just on what the medical side are doing and on the different masks and, and and what was necessary and what wasn't it was really 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 good everyone said it was fantastic that's brilliant yeah we'll definitely um share that with everyone um mm. another question um what are what do you think will change for the future of our industry is there anything that you can see happening differently than what we were doing before but if I go back to that interview I did with Tamar, he seems to think that now this will just be part of our uniform. He thinks that it's going to, because there's, there's going to be other viruses and things. Um, so I think we're, we're in this for the long term kind of thing. And, um, you know, I know there's some people like being thinking about charging separately for PPE, but I think, again, that's something that this time next year we're possibly still going to be using it exactly the same so uh, whether or not that just goes to a price increase or or, or whatever but yeah I think um, I think we are going to be in, in it for the long term with the but it's not a you know it's a great thing to have the standards the high standards that bringing them even higher if you can from what we were doing before so yeah I, I think there's also going to probably be a much more of a push for um things that you can do from from home and so i think that because we will likely be going into a recession as well after that that i think that we'll probably see longer periods of time between people's return and so the way i have uh kind of combating that is that designing a at-home facial to go in between each service at a, at a lesser price so that they they will still have that extension of treatment. We're not going to see as much drop down and have to start over every time we see them, but we still have a little bit of an income and contact in between a longer spread out time period. Yeah, I know there's a lot of people been doing like online consultations during lockdown and I mean, there's some salons where they've practically replaced the whole income just from turning it into like purely um, retail driven. So I think that is going to be something online shops and, and everything. I think that, that is going to be um, a, a lot more um, prevalent than, than in the past. I think home care and, and um, like Kat says, home treatments, I think it's going to be a, a great way. Definitely. And we've also had a comment on Facebook um, and Jenny has said that she feels that all she can do at the moment is watch the news. Um, my mental health is really starting to suffer now. Um, I think a lot of people can relate to that because we do sort of feel like we're stuck to our screens waiting for this information. Are there any ways that we can kind of, I guess, counteract that where we're always kind of constantly checking the news and TV and our phones? What can we do about that? I think once we... we, we like I said, I, th I feel like it's gone in phases and I think we're, we're just in this no man's land phase at the moment. I think once we've got that date, then that'll kick in the next phase. The next phase is like, right, now we've just got to, to, to get on with it and, and, and get it sorted and get open. So 
I think for some people, getting that date's going to be a relief. For some people, it's going to give them something to focus on. But again, for some people, I think it's going to set them into another state of panic. And, you know, I keep saying this tonight, all the, the salon owners that we work with, and, it, you know, it, whatever you're feeling is fine. You know, it's, we're all in this together. Um, nobody says, even if we get a date, it doesn't mean that you've got to open on that date. Mm -hmm. If you don't feel ready to open on that date, then, you know, you can just choose another date. It's, your clients aren't going to go anywhere else. They're going to be so pleased to come back. But if you don't feel ready, then, you know, don't feel pressurised that you've got to open right on that date. Um, you know, take a couple of days for yourself just to, like, familiarize yourself and as I say with the team what what you're going to do um you say it doesn't have to be where it's like mad dash got to get everything open for that one date and I think that's what everyone's thinking but uh, well, I, I also think that now's not I mean I'm going to use the Brazilian uh analogy once you find someone that you're comfortable with doing your brazilian waxing for you you stay with that person forever this is like brazilian waxing times a thousand so if you've got somebody who you're comfortable with you feel safe with you feel like they're going to do the right thing you're not going to go somewhere else as a customer so right now i think the best thing is is as an owner or a therapist is to kind of close off the noise really decide what where your boundaries are what feels comfortable for you and do that your clients are going to wait for you they um they love you they have a relationship with you they're not people are not comfortable with going out and sourcing a new therapist at this point so i think that you're fine as long as you you have your boundaries and you know what they are that's a great, great advice. And this leads quite nicely on to this um, question that we've had on Zoom. Um, I've had a bit of a difficulty with clients who are good friends of mine. Um, a, few of, a few of them are sceptical about COVID-19 and are quite sarcastic about wearing masks. Um, I don't want to lose their sympathy, but on another way, how can I tell them and insist that they should wear masks and not bringing too many belongings into the salon? What would you do? But the guidelines actually, and again, the statutory, they're not um, mandatory. The guidelines say that a client doesn't have to wear a mask in the, the hair ones. Um, and I think, I don't think we're going to get different ones to that. I mean, personally, I, I think most clients will want to wear a mask. But as well, you know, the, the, there's the other option. What you could do is if someone, because, because, with a mask, I went and had um, a colour done the other day, and it is quite strange because, like, you've only got this part of someone's face shown, and when you've got two people like that, you can't tell whether someone's smiling or or, or not. Um, and it's it's quite strange. That's the first time I've been sort of mask to mask with someone. Um, but you know, the thing is that another option could be if. A client, your client doesn't want to wear a mask and you want them to be covered, you could get some of the disposable visors and, and have like a charge so that they've got an option of either wearing a mask or wearing a, a visor. Um, and some people might feel com more comfortable with a visor and then, you know, you've both got visors on and, and mask. So I think it's your business. You make the rules. So... Mm -hmm. You know, if you want your clients to be wearing masks as well, or, or visors, then that's just, and, and if someone doesn't want to do that, then, you know, then just let them go because it's, it, it's not just about wearing the PPE, it's there for a reason, it's there for safety. And it, it, we still don't know how this pandemic's flying around, whether it's flying around, I'm saying about flying around in the air, uh, rather than on just on surfaces, so it's got to be that you feel completely protected and safe in, in your business as well as like protecting everybody else. So, you know, if somebody doesn't want to wear a mask and you do want them to wear a mask, then sorry, you, they just don't come to you. Yeah, I agree. I agree entirely. Yeah, that's uh, it to set the boundaries. Yeah. 
and it's setting the standards as well for, for your business. And I think this is the thing as well, where you are going to stand out head and shoulders above competition. If you make really hard, fast rules and don't let one person do something and somebody else not, and that's just, that's just how it's done in your salon, then, you know, it's, it's the same, if I can go back to the gloves for, for doing nails, my, in my salon, we've worn gloves probably for the last 20 years doing nails, but especially, I mean, there's more places now do, but at that particular time, nobody did. But what happened was clients, if they went somewhere else or if they were on holiday and they went somewhere, they'd come back and like say, oh, Susan, they didn't wear gloves. And it's like, you know, it's, so they see that as like our standards you know, but doesn't make whether somebody else is doing it, you know, that, that's totally irrelevant. You know, in my salon, that's what happens. So. And, and keeping PPE on the clients, I think is really important because you need to protect, you need to protect your staff as well because they come and go. Um, those of us that are working there, we are in that environment all day a lot of times not able to leave and so if people are not willing they're not you have to protect your own flock and um as an owner and if if clients are not willing to allow you to do that then it's really you know you have to make the decision what is more important your people or your till and you know it really should to, to be a good owner, I mean, your your staff is the most important thing that you have. Mm. But again, you could do that in a video as well. So, so when you do your video or when you do your, your pre-check for clients to so that they'll get something beforehand saying all of the expectations, you know, that, that'll be one of the expectations that, you know, masks have to be worn or a visor has to be worn um and you could even like say you know if you let us know beforehand we can make sure that it's ready for you when you come and all that kind of thing make it part of like the the actual treatment definitely some good advice there um linda has just commented saying i like the saying there are some clients you can't afford to lose but there are some that you can't afford to keep especially now for your own safety that's really mm -hmm. true isn't it <laughs> Totally. Very much. But well, clients, they will come round. You know, you always get clients who will try and push the boundaries, you know, but it's it's a boundary you don't want to, to, to break down. You know, if you've got that, you want that safety there. It's not, it's not, it, it, it's not an option, really. Yeah, it's, it's like uh, when you have a client who comes in and wants to negotiate price. Once you start negotiating, yeah, you will never win. So you have to be firm when you go in. And it's, and it's for the PPE, it's the same thing as on price. Absolutely. Yeah. I've got time for a couple more questions. Um, Lisa wants to know, um, do you take the client's temperature before going ahead with the treatment? What's the process with you, Kat? Um, I am taking everybody's uh, temperature. So the process for me is they text me when they get here, I go and meet them in the parking lot. I walk them through so they never have to touch anything. And I walk them over to my hand sanitizer. And while they're rubbing their hand sanitizer, I take their temperature. And it's just very, very simple. Um, I did make the mistake the first day. I basically met people in and, and because my, my first thing to do is want to hug people and to stop myself from hugging I was straight up with the with the temperature and um don't do that <laughs> it, it's, it's a little off-putting so I've learned learned from my mistake um don't don't greet to have have a little bit of a routine that you do before you put that uh in their face I know we obviously we use them for, for radio frequency and I brought I was home from the salon one of them and I wake up on a morning and Stephen will have that rose will have this thing on my head and it's like well got this gun at my head on a morning <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, it's been absolutely brilliant speaking to both of you. Um, I hope that this has given a lot of um, reassurance and guidance for um, everyone watching here. But Kat and Susan, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. It's been brilliant to have you both. And um, we'll speak very soon. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Take care. Thank Bye. you.